Hey guys, um, I'm Jose. Um, this is tutorial 16. Um, I'm doing this tutorial in order to just clarify some of the issues uh, and comments on tutorial 13 on agents. So I'm just going to isolate one simple agent and I'm going to make him follow the mouse so we can just put together the ideas of the vector math we saw um, in previous tutorials and the idea of um, a steering behavior uh, basic uh, attraction, right? So. I'm going to build it from scratch here. So if you know already how to write this stuff, please bear with me for a second. Uh, back. Um, what we're gonna do is do a little class called agent, right? And we should get used to the idea of building our own classes uh, in a quite you know, quick way, right? So I'm gonna just do an, an agent class that will have a big 3D of location. This will be its main parameter. A location vector. <coughs> so this would be the main variable, like CD and location, right? And here we're going to specify location equals location. And let's write the outline of what the class will actually do. So, and we're going to do a run. That would be the outline. First, we're going to display. Then we want to update the position of the the entity, the, the agent. Uh, so we're going to say update. And then I want it to follow mouse. This is kind of um, the behavior that I wanted to have, right? Uh, at this stage. We're just doing this outline. Of course, we will have an error because these uh, functions don't exist. So we're going to start uh, writing them. Let's write them in first display. And this is the way I've been uh, showing the tutorials since um, number seven in classes, right? The idea of building this outline of of behavior that we eventually start like uh, these little modules that we start writing right so um, first we're going to say ellipse mm, the ellipse would be a representation of what the agent is we're going to put it in location x and location y right? and it would be 20, 20, 20. the other thing we need here is to say just for the sake of be sure that um, it looks properly, so we can also fill the path, so it's going to be white and scroll black. So I'm not interested in the graphics right now, I just, uh, I'm interested in the behavior that we're going to achieve. Um, for one second here, I'm going to gray out these two functions that they don't exist, so I don't want to just get that error. All right? so this is a very simple um, class, they just a point uh, represented an ellipse some point in the, in the screen. Right? What else do we need here? Um, we need to import the library of Toxic Lips because we're using a VEC 3D, right? So import um, toxic.geom dot start semicolon, right? And what else do we want to say here? Maybe smooth just for the graphics graphics to look a little bit better in the screen right um so at this stage let's check that we don't have any errors okay just a black screen great and we need to call that uh, agent into the screen now so we're going to do the three steps that actually make that agent appear in the screen uh, declare it with an a a equals new agent and here we need to provide one vector where it will 
uh, appear in the screen uh, to begin with. So we're going to do a vector called start location, right? And that vector, we're going to describe it here. Start location equals new vector ID. Mm. I'm going to say width divided by 2, mm. height divided by 2, comma 0. Mm. Saying in the middle of the screen. Like width, it's a command just to for processing to know, uh, depending how big is the screen, 600 would be divided in, into 2 here. So it would be in the middle of the screen. And then just we need the third stage of running our class. So we are calling the class and we're declaring what is the class doing? It's just showing itself in the middle of the script. Very simple, right? Um, so what do we need at this point? We need to um, bring the function update. What is update? Um, I want this agent or this entity to move. Uh, eventually I want it to move to follow the mouse, but um, when we talk about steering behaviors, and this is something that we saw already in uh, tutorial 13, we add, uh, we are constantly adding uh, the acceleration, the calculation of acceleration to our vector of velocity, and then eventually to the location. So I'm going to do the same structure so we can see how this works, and we're going to go deeper into the vector map. We're going to do a vector of velocity, and a vector of acceleration. I'm going to define these two vectors uh, as 0, 0, 0. Right, so that's 0, 0, 0. And this empty constructor in the case of k vec I mean vector 3D, sorry, uh, represents 0, 0, 0. It's the same that's saying this, right? So you and use it as a shortcut. Um, again, these two variables are yet not doing anything. So let's bring update and let's write the update function. So void update. What I want to do here um, is just say first of all, let's let's go step by step, right? So we're gonna say location dot add self um, velocity right on this stage as much as we're calling that function because our velocity is zero 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 as much as we keep adding that vector to the position of our vector nothing happens let's look at what happens if I add a little one here Right, so the um, object is moving, right? It's moving to the right. What, it, what are we doing with this line? We're saying each frame add this small vector of velocity to the location of the vector of, uh, location, right? So imagine the vector of velocity, a little arrow located here in the zero, zero, just to the right. And each time we bring that little arrow on top of the location of our um, agent and that's kind of our update very simple if we change this to 1 1 we would move diagonally and basically this velocity vector described in minus 1 and 1 both in x and y we can achieve any direction right so values going from minus 1 to 1 you could even put something like 0.2, right? So you describe uh, so much in x and a, a little bit in y, and you, you can actually define all the angles with, uh, with this vector. But that's not what we want right now. It's kind of a little explanation of how that update would be working. We're going to do a little bit. Um, uh, a little bit of a longer function here, and we're going to say first of all, velocity dot act self 
acceleration, right? So let's try that. We're going to put now the same one now in acceleration, and we're passing it to velocity and then for velocity to locate. Uh, what we get here, if you can see, it's a completely different effect. It's, this, this is accelerating. It's uh, basically velocity. Um, it's a vector that it's uh, the accumulative um, speed or the speed that it's having the mo uh, our agent in any point. So if we add each frame, we add one to velocity, velocity starts becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we are adding that vector again to location. So the location is increasingly uh, going up. That's the whole idea of steering behavior. It's um, you can add a, um, you can make it accelerate or de decelerate just by like um, using these vectors in this way. Uh, so what we're gonna do here, we're gonna add a little bit of a, a threshold. And we're gonna say limit five. Right? representing our maximum velocity. So it can start really smooth, you know, we could say 0 0.001, something really, really tiny. But it won't go further. You can see how it's moving very slowly eventually and it's adding up, it's adding up and eventually we'll start moving faster and faster. But we'll never pass the velocity of 5 because velocity has been constrained to that number. Again, this is not the end result that we want to achieve. Um, what I'm going to add here, I'm going to say uh, acceleration equals new back 3D 0, 0, 0. Why is this so? Because we want to do calculations, let's say go towards the mouse, but the mouse could be moving, right? So we want to be able to reset the acceleration every frame and add that vector to our uh, velocity. The velocity won't be uh, clear or won't be override um, by a zero, zero, zero. Um, because this will represent our uh, actual movement in any point in time. But the acceleration would be a new calculation every frame. That's the one we want to work with. We want to find where the mouse is and generate a vector towards the mouse and add that to acceleration if that makes sense. So let's try it. Um, follow mouse. And I'm going to write that function here. Follow mouse. Right. Um, so let's, let's make this function... We have to define a target, right? So first of all, we're going to define a vector. There's the target. This is where we where we want to go. In this case, it will be the mouse, right? Mouse x and zero because we're working with a vector 3D. I, I Usually you use vector 3D in order, I mean, because I can switch between 2D and 3D sometimes and I don't have to really change the code too much for that. So I just like write vector 3Ds most of the time, I don't bother doing vector 2D. Um, so we have a target here. And now we're going to do our vector of difference. Difference. Um, Diff referring to difference or the subtraction between the location of our of the target and our location target dot sub block. right so oh sorry mm. yes I am that's uh, So, some students have asked me, um, why do we get, if we want that vector that goes from our location, let's say, in this case, this point, right, to the location of our target, that in, in our case is the arrow, it's the, it's the um, 
the mouse, right? Why is that the subtraction of vectors? Uh, you have to imagine that the vector of location of the sphere, it's a vector that goes from 0, 0, it's a line and ends here. It's an arrow, right? And the vector of the mouse here, as much as it's the location of the mouse, is also every, every vector kind of relates in a base to the 0, 0 coordinate. So those two arrows, if you go through any book of vector subtraction, the subtraction between these two vectors will be the vector, the arrow that joins them, right? So go through that. Uh, I wish I, I could have like some of those uh, images. Maybe I will post, post them in the website. Um, but that vector is the subtraction. So what do we want to do with this, uh, with this guy? Um, we want to first, we want to normalize it. Um, why? Because that arrow is too big to just pass it out into acceleration. It's, 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 we have to, we want to scale it in some way. And second, we're going to say diff dot scale self. Let's say for now two. Just any number. And we're going to do some changes later. Um, so the calculation is an it's an arrow that it's always looking towards the mouse starting from here and looking towards the mouse. And we're going to pass that little arrow to the uh, acceleration. So how do we do that? We're going to say acceleration, right? That is our global variable, dot add cell. So add the vector of difference, right? So we're going to run this again. Let's see what we have so far. So we have a little agent that is following the location of the mouse. If he gets it, because it's kind of silly, you know, he starts moving around the mouse. Now he's kind of confused. Um, oh yeah. So this is kind of how strong that uh, vector is, right? That's interesting. So this is a very kind of linear way of doing it. So, but we could actually do a little bit more, so the behavior becomes a little bit more interesting. So we could say diff, oh sorry, float distance equals diff dot magnitude. What are we getting here? We are getting how big is this? Um, uh, what is the distance between the location of the agent and the mouse. Why would we want to use that? Because there's a lot of stuff that we can actually do with that distance. We could say, for instance, um, let's say 100 divided by distance. Yeah. So the strength of that vector would change depending on the distance to the mouse. So if you're far away you won't have the same behavior as if you were close. So we can try something like, for instance, um, yeah, distance or here you can start playing with it. You can see that it starts if the distance is too small. It won't have too much attraction, but eventually, if it's really close, it will be stronger. Um, so you can play a little bit with this, and then you can see. If you want to remove a little bit this constraint here, the limit, or you want to say, okay, I'm going to give a, li a crazy limit, you know, 30. Um, you would really see what it's actually happening, you know, you can really have a crazy, it's following, maybe this is interesting for people that are looking for in, uh, some graphic effects, um, where there's a bunch of stuff, you know, like following the mouse or something like that, not in a very kind of, uh, kind of pathfinding way, um, this could be useful, um, so it has some momentum to it, um, that's quite interesting. 
the important thing here to understand is that target could be anything in in our script it could be any vector right now we have this vector target here uh, that is described by the mouse position but I use the mouse position to show that we can this point could be this vector could be anywhere this could be in the screen it could be a point in the terrain that you want to evaluate it could be anything so just by changing this target and obviously by scaling a little bit these numbers here you can get quite interesting behavior um, that's it